Welcome to the last Neanderthals podcast. It's the 7th of October since the horrendous attack by Hamas. It's been a year and the war is only escalating. Wally, share your thoughts. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, the past year has just been really sad. Really sad for everyone. If, if there's been at any point in the past year where you've been happy or excited about anything that's going on, you're not a good person, probably. There's probably something going wrong. Whichever side you're on, if there's been any point where you've been, like, cheering someone on and they're like, oh, that's great, there's something missing in your head in the empathy department because everything we've seen from Palestine, from Israel, now from Lebanon as well in the past year has just been horrific, man. It's all been sad. It's all been so sad. Yeah. Tragedy is the best word to describe it. Uh, more than 40,000, probably we're looking at more than 50,000 uh, innocent people killed in Palestine. Now, mindless bombing of Lebanon is happening. And there were no negotiations after the 7th of October. They, like I said on the previous podcast, um, you know, when the 9-11 attack happened, just like how the Bush administration, just without any strategy, went into Afghanistan, caused a lot of havoc there, and then went and did a... Another thing that media does that really frustrates me is that they use statistics to tell how tragic the Palestine situation is. 40,000 people have died, 30,000 people people have died. People can't resonate with that. Why don't you show what it's actually like to be a Palestinian? What a Palestinian kid goes through? What a Palestinian mother goes through? How she's, a Palestinian mother is no different to the mother in that lives in America or that lives in the UK or anywhere in the world. And if her kids were beheaded because you dropped a bomb on them, right? That how much, how much that would ruin her life. And that could have been you. You just got lucky that you you got you you were born in a world where there's peace, you know. And it again, the media is not encouraging these empathetic narrative. They have got these disgusting narratives going on, where you know, if the Muslims or the brown person does an act of terror, that's terrorism. But when you know, an American does it, or an Israeli does it, or Netanyahu does it. You know, then it's uh, it's it's his right to defend himself, even though if it kills forty thousand innocent people, it is absurd, man. It is absolutely yeah. fucking disgusting. Yeah, it's difficult to find words for it at this point, but yeah, just the storytelling is is so important. If the media did that, and that's one thing Israel does really well. Their PR and their media is so good and that's why they got so many people on their side straight after October the 7th um, because they're good they're good at this and then they add the atrocity propaganda to it like pretending 40 babies were beheaded and all these other uh, things that when people think about they'll be like what that's yeah. just complete evil if someone can do that they're uh, the worst person in the world whereas when the media comes to the Palestinian side, they'll like downplay things and they'll be like, oh, maybe this happened, maybe this doesn't happen, or the Palestinian Authority says, or the Hamas-run health ministry says this, whereas with the 40 beheaded babies, they just ran with it. No proof, yeah. no ru no nothing, just go with it. Oh, yeah. Palestinian people die, get killed. Oh, Hamas says this many people are killed. Like it, At every point, it's diminishing the Palestinian experience. The 200 or so people who were killed uh, in 2023 prior to October 7, their lives don't matter at all either. They were just completely ignored. Apparently there was a ceasefire when those 200 people were killed. Apparently there was a ceasefire before October 7th um, when those people were killed. Apparently there was a ceasefire when 200 people were murdered at the peaceful uh, march uh, of return in Palestine where 200 people were marching peacefully towards the the border uh, and they were shot by Israeli IDF um, apparently that was a ceasefire as well but then when the other side does something bad like that oh they broke a ceasefire they're so bad it's literally so disgusting it's, it's like you must be in a cage and if you retaliate you are evil you are bad but I will keep you in that cage 
and I will retaliate at any inconvenience, whether it's big or small. And of course, uh, October 7th wasn't just an inconvenience, but some of these things like the march to return posed no threat to Israel or Israelis. They still mowed down 200 people. They literally have a term called mowing the lawn where they regularly just yeah. bomb Gaza just to kill down the population a little bit and like uh, diminish morale and things like that. So it, either be consistent or accept that you're just a racist, ethno-supremacist, bad person. There's no other way to put this. You, you can't be like an equal... You can't look at humanity in an equal way and it's think what Israel is doing okay. It's literally what we're seeing now from a lot of these people is that one Israeli life is equal to thousands of Palestinians' lives. To secure Israel's peace and security, whatever, we must kill 40,000 Palestinian people. That many Israeli people are nowhere near at risk. Like, nowhere near that many Israeli people were at risk from anything. But to secure... Benjamin Netanyahu and a couple of these other guys, we must kill 40,000 Palestinians. Like, you can't tell me that you don't believe an Israeli life is worth more than a Palestinian life if you think it's okay to kill uh, this many people. For a hypothetical future where you might be at risk. It's not even like they ignore the deaths, the killings that are happening right now to say we must do this because in a hypothetical future, like Hamas might get the capability to attack us and do this and do that and let's just forget that America the biggest superpower in the world is supporting us and the UK one of the biggest superpower in the world is supporting us and we are such an advanced country but Hamas with their uh, rockets made from like sugar and cookies and stuff they're gonna kill us all if we don't do this so we must kill 50,000 people we must kill 20,000 kids to protect ourselves yeah. and they're gonna grow up to be hamas anyways is is what they say yeah that's how they justify like... killing innocent little babies that yeah. is disgusting when ma majority of palestinians they didn't agree with the with the reign of hamas on them what, what did Bilal say that only seven percent voted for them yeah um, well i don't I, know the I don't, exact I don't remember. well I, I, at the time the, the the new ones is at, at the time around 44 percent of the population voted or 44 percent of the vote went towards hamas i don't know what percentage of the population actually voted at the time but that was in 2005 or six and over 50 percent of the population in gaza is under the age of 18 and at that time, anyone who was under 18 in 2005 wouldn't have been able to vote as well. So anyone in Gaza who is below the age of 36 cannot have voted for Hamas. And that is the overwhelming majority of the population in Gaza. Furthermore, at the time, anyone who is over 36 right now, 36 years of age, um, only 44% of those people who voted... Who knows how many voted? I'm not sure. 44% of those people, that small minority of people, voted for Hamas. So right now, it is probably close to like 10% of people alive, maybe even less than that, actually voted for Hamas. And yeah. you see many like mainstream um, people in America, especially, justifying what happened to Palestinians by saying, well, they voted Hamas in. Shut up! You're so stupid. These I can't believe like these extremists, like that Bill Maher guy or what, however you pronounce his name, are just allowed to go on TV and say these ridiculous things over and over. If like an anti-Semitic person was on TV like that and constantly saying these things, they would instantly be taken off TV. But when he is clearly Islamophobic and he says it himself, he he constantly makes fun at Muslims. And he constantly um, picks at Islam as well. Bro, imagine someone was doing that to Judaism. It, it would not run. And that's because Islamophobia has just been so normalized over the past 20 years after 9-11. It's been, it's, it's been okay. Even probably before that, Arabs were looked at as barbaric and things like that. But especially after that, Arab hate, anti-Muslim hate is so normalized. It's so accepted in society. It's crazy.
Yeah. And Even you know, Keir Starmer, another... when Iran attacked, first thing he says, Israel has the right to defend itself. When Yoav Gallant said that Israel has the right to cut off the water and electricity and all of that to Gaza, Keir Starmer said, yes, they do have that right. There's been quite extreme people who even said that, oh yeah, that was wrong. Israel haven't shouldn't have said that. Israel backtracked on that as well. But Keir Starmer said that was okay, bro. It is so crazy, the, the world yeah. we live in right now. And you know, another Johnny Harris, um, a journalist, American journalist who makes really good videos. He he released a video on um, a reel on his Instagram, which got deleted shortly after, and what basically showed the reel. I don't know if he got if he deleted or if he got deleted. I don't know about that. But uh, the the extremists in Israel are already listing lands and properties in Lebanon. And apparently they did the same thing with when they were, you know, capturing land from West Bank and Gaza. They were doing the same thing where they were listing and ditchy selling. It, although there's a war happening, they're dropping bombs. People are already doing property deals. <laughs> yeah, well, I, I've seen similar things and I saw similar things about Gaza as well. But I've not been able to like, I've not really looked into it to verify if that is actually happening. Because it's kind of hard to do that with those kind of things. Um, but a lot of credible people are saying that those things are true and they are verified. Like there was one in, I think, Canada, at an at, uh, uh, event in Canada, they were auctioning off land in Gaza as well. So, yeah, it is horrible, but I think I would add that it's hard to verify those kind of things if they are actually real and if they are related to Israel itself, if it's just some extremist doing it. Um, I don't know. There's not much you can do about that. Yeah. But um, uh, the other thing about Johnny Harris is he did that very good expose basically on Netanyahu where he makes it clear that he never wanted a two state solution so all these idiots again like Piers Morgan who keep going on about oh but we just need a two state solution and Israel must do this to get a peace and to get two state solution the guy has said over and over again that he's put roadblocks in place for a two state solution a member of his party, of the Likud party, uh, assassinated Yitzhak Rabin, the guy who was working towards the Oslo Accords. Netanyahu then became prime minister and boasted that he uh, had stopped the Oslo Accords. Yes, that he put there was a leaked video too. That, that yeah, leaked exactly. video of him, yeah. It, it, it's, I, I mean, it's so obvious that the narrative and the framing and it's literally because israel are our friends and our allies so we must be on their side this is where the humanity goes out of play where they pretend to be like these these moral beacons for the world completely ignored because they are yeah. our allies and they have our political interest at hand i wonder what what it actually is like is there some is there like an incredibly monish incredible monetary gain they get from it is it some sort of power is it just embedded in the system to support israel in this way is it as they say to fight against iran what makes them so blindly supportive of israel where where any little attack against israel they all come out everyone does a press conference we must support israel but forty thousand palestinian kids dead oh yeah we're trying to get a ceasefire guys we're working on it they're there must be a ceasefire. We must do something, yeah. and then they're selling oh, them weapons. Uh, diplomatic, uh, you know, we need diplomatic resolutions, but you know, continues to then bomb another country. Um, yeah. it, clearly, they're not doing that. Um, I think it seems quite obvious now that they just want more land. We just gotta say our ways. That's what their actions show. You know, it's like we can't just listen to words. Um, and then you look at Trump and Elon, how they flipped uh, initially. Uh, you know, I remember, the, I mean, Trump says all the time, oh, if I was in charge, Ukraine would have never happened. The, you know, the Palestine situation would have never happened. All of these things and the wrong is war. I'm going to end all wars. And now he's saying, oh, like he's he's still against the Ukraine war. You know, he wants to end it when he's elected. But again, when it comes to Israel, we must fully support Israel. Yeah, it's so, so weird, isn't it? It's why is so this weird. why is this such a bipartisan issue that in the UK same support, no blind impunity completely for Israel, we must support them. In the US, exact same thing. Both parties 
blind support. We must support Israel. It's genuinely so weird. It is uh, and this is what fuels the conspiracy theories as well because it is yeah. weird. There is no other issues like this where these guys just blindly support something despite what the public want them to do and say. Like majority of the UK population and the US population want to see a ceasefire, yet these people keep uh, giving blind support to Israel, to Netanyahu, who has made it clear he does not want a ceasefire, and people in Israel are protesting against him because they think he does not want a ceasefire either, particularly the families of the people who are held hostage. They have been protesting against him from the very start because it's been very obvious to anyone who cares about the hostages that he does not want them back because bombing them, bombing where they are, is not a way to get them back. When Hamas offered uh, ceasefire deals, imagine the terrorists are the one offering to give the hostages back and you're saying no. Bro is making the terrorists look better than him. Imagine yeah. how messed up you have to be. Like, those guys aren't good. Nobody likes them. But Hamas are horrible people as well. But this guy is so bad. He's yeah. so depraved that he's making them look better than him. Yeah, and which is very bad for us, the innocent Muslims who who, got, who who want nothing to do with the Taliban, who want nothing to do with Hezbollah, who want nothing to do with Hamas. And the poor, innocent Jewish people as well. They're like, we've been persecuted through our history. And now humanity is going to hate us again because of these balance. Like Netanyahu. Yeah, like yeah it's, exactly. Man, it's... Again, it's like, are, are we, have we learned nothing from the past? Like, I keep on touching on how the Bush administration absolutely... They, they regret the Iraq war, right? And then <laughs> give it 10 years, they're going to regret, oh, you know, what happened in Gaza. We should have never done that. We should have never supported it. But what your sorries mean nothing. Yeah, they don't really this... regret it. It's just because Julian Assange and people like that expose their war crimes. Now they have to pretend that they regret it because they want to continue to seem like the moral beacon of the world. Because for America, if they're no longer the good guys, their whole worldview is going to be shattered. I don't even think they'll... Yeah. I don't know what people will do there because that's what their whole country is built on. We are the good guys. We're going to save the world, all of this. In Iraq, Julian Assange completely destroyed that narrative. He made the war crimes like so obviously clear. That's probably why Israel won't allow any journalists into Gaza, despite even people like Piers Morgan questioning that. Like, why would you not allow uh, journalists in? You can't say it's because of safety. There's been wars all throughout uh, history, modern history, and journalists have gone in, they've risked their own lives, that's what they're willing to do, it's part of their job description, but Israel wants to make the decision for them on that and say, no, don't do that guys don't worry, mm. we'll let you in at some later point, just let us handle this for now that's just not how journalism works and um, hopefully when the investigations happen people will be able to see these crimes for themselves, unless yeah. Israel can somehow help hinder that process as well i'm currently listening to this book by ryan holiday and he you know how we said that there's it's good people against bad people and there are good people everywhere and bad people everywhere in every country and you know there's all good in us and bad in every individual um he 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 kind of does a similar thing but he says with courageous and cowards and it's so funny that you know when we look at the ben shapiro's and the beacons of free speech and Jordan Peterson and they have spoken so much about the tragedies and rightfully so they should against Jewish people that have happened throughout history and you know that he kind of gives them that like you know like that sense of like that he feeds their ego when they're talking about Ukraine how terrible that is how Putin is a mad crazy man why don't you hold your own people accountable right yeah. by, by own people I mean your own government accountable that's when bravery truly counts you can't be just against one war and then turn a blind eye to another one. If you're going to be anti-war in one place, you have to be anti-war everywhere. I don't care if it's your people oppressing. I don't care who is oppressing and who is the oppressor, right? You have to be anti-war. And that's courage. That's courage. When your, own, when your own government is doing horrible things and you speak up against it, that's truly courageous because you're... You're putting your life on the line, right? It's easy to speak about the oppressions that uh, the other countries are committing, 
right? So this 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 has exposed all of these so-called role models and so-called like preachers of peace and preachers of strength that they're all cowards, man. Or at yeah. least when it comes to that. So that yeah. I, I, I it frustrates me now. The the cowardice I've seen, man. And 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 you know the that has led to a lot of evil. I think deep down when people can't face fears, that's that's the beginning of fear, uh, of of evil and ignorance. Yeah. Cowardice I say and ignorance. Weak men create tough times. And we're we're very firmly in the era of weak men at the moment. Yeah. Um weak men are rewarded as well, like all these uh shit talkers like Ben Shapiro who just complain on the internet about things um who called for wars and called for people to be killed while sitting behind the screen. These kind of men um are what 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 drive us drive the world into what it is right now, especially the Middle East where thousands of people are being killed and people like Ben Shapiro were cheering it on. Yeah. He did from the start. Jordan Peterson as well saying give him hell. Oh, it's so annoying the notion that you must bomb another country completely destroy it because you have been attacked it just shows the lack of empathy the la- the disregard for other human beings lives like to get the bad guys you don't just kill all the innocent good guys around them as well it's i don't know it's such a basic concept why do i have to explain this you are not a courageous moral hero by saying oh bomb everything into oblivion when there's tens of thousands of little kids innocent people there yeah why would you escalate things and why are people like escalating this iran uh the 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 war that the the the, that is currently warming up between iran and israel like why is media only holding iran accountable and not holding israel accountable it it makes no sense i'm i'm not by the way i'm not trying to justify iran's action i think what they're doing wrong what bombing all that stuff because again we need diplomatic conversations right but the person the the the, the ball is in israel's court uh court and they don't want diplomatic you know uh a conversation so again it's it's you can't justify what iran and all these terrorist organizations are doing but it's understandable right it's understandable it's wrong it is is wrong but again if you if you lived in an open prison and you had so much anger and hatred uh, in your in your heart rate, and your whole family was bombed. I don't care who you are, you would wanna take revenge, and then you would go ahead and join a terrorist organization. So it's understandable. I'm not saying this right, right? My sister, she was, uh, she almost died because of assassination attempt by the Taliban, right? Well, I I'm the last person to justify the actions. That they're horrible. They're terrorists, but. What they did is understandable because they've been radicalized. Islam has been weaponized against them. They have been groomed from young age. They've been told the wrong things from young age. They've come from poor backgrounds and warlords in order to fulfill their needs and become more powerful. They're abusing these kids, right? It's understandable. Mm. So why is media not promoting understanding, but instead they're promoting more division? So we might be actually looking at world wars at this point, man. Yeah, What's to just, say that just, you can't escalate to a world war? And then no one wins in a world war. No one's winning in this war. It's all losers. I mean, especially the innocent people. They're losing. The world yeah. is losing. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. They, they don't promote understanding or unity against bad things. They just promote one one narrative the whole time. And just regarding the Iran thing, what I thought, again, was... So, it just clearly shows the mindset of people like Netanyahu, the Israeli government, and these media institutions as well, because the Iranian strikes killed zero people in Israel, but they hit targets in Israel. They hit, according to Iran, they were aiming for military targets. Israel said, oh, no one died. Yes, this was a major success. No Israelis died. The Iranian attack was a failure and the media presented it in that way as well the iranian attack was a failure because no one died no one got killed imagine their measurement of success is how many people you kill 
This is why they're okay with this war in Gaza, because they think the more people you kill, you win. You're winning. Not, oh, maybe they did strike some military targets or whatever. I don't know. Again, we're not supportive of the Iranian regime. However, for, for you to quantify success, whether their attack failed or not, through how many people were killed, if people were killed, they would have said, oh, Iranian attack successful. That is such a depraved mindset. It's scary. Yeah. It shows why they're okay with what's going on because they think this many people have died, they're winning. Yeah. Uh, and the reason why we're being harsher on America and Israel is because they have, they're the superpowers, right? Iran, I'm sure their media also promotes death to America and they have also boxed all Jewish people into one, you know, one ideology. And if, if, I'm sure there are a lot of media promotes this idea that if you're Jewish, then you're automatically a Zionist and if you're American even if you're innocent American even you're against what your government is doing again they're boxing you in so we are also against that we are against division I don't care if it's Iran doing it or if it's Israel doing it we are against it because it is a threat to humanity it is yeah. anti-humanity what's happening and, yeah, and if this and, continues, um, you you know you know sorry to cut you off. When they bring these like they celebrate people like Nelson Mandela and these great leaders from the past, right? Because they were courageous and they forgave, even being oppressed after being oppressed for decades, even being in prison wrongfully for for twenty seven, twenty eight years, he forgave the people who oppressed him, right? They would celebrate these people, but when it actually comes down to them doing it, right? The reason why Nelson Mandela was able to bring that change is because of that. But when it comes, when you have the opportunity to show grace, show kindness, lead through diplomacy, you're doing the polar opposite. You're increasing terrorism by killing innocent people. So I'm done with this hypocrisy, man. How, how, for how long can they just get away with these false uh, and manipulative narratives? Uh, yeah, uh, and... The thing you said about uh, holding them to a higher standard, more so than them being superpowers, is because they position themselves as these uh, beacons of morality and of democracy. You can't call yourself the only democracy in the Middle East and say you're this beacon of morality, but then you want to be held to the same standards as terrorists, as a group that you say are terrorists, as a group that the UK says are terrorists, the US says are terrorists, and you say, oh, why can they do that, but we can't, and then you go and do worse than them. You should be more restrained than them. You're the Western democratic country with all these capabilities and all this technology, and yet you are causing more death and destruction than them. Forget everything else, even if you don't care about, like, oh, humanity. It's just embarrassing if, if they're being uh, less destructive than you and you're meant to be this moral beacon democracy all of this it's embarrassing like yeah. how how can i don't know surely people it's must bullying, understand man. this like any any power dynamic like you see the police brutality in america against some people who are criminals people who are causing destruction and who are doing bad things the police need to show restraint they need to be the one to de-escalate calm the situation down find a resolution when we see in America the police just blindly coming in and shooting everyone, we say, that's wrong. They shouldn't do that. They're in the position of power. They need to de-escalate. They need to find a solution. It's the same thing here. Of course, on a much grander, more horrific scale, because Hamas murdered loads of people. But again, you need to find a solution. The solution is not kill more people. The solution is not they kill this many people, so that means we're allowed to kill 50 times more people or 100 times more, and then it will be proportionate, as whatever was Piers Morgan's idea of proportionality, he would always say, how many people must they kill until it's no longer proportionate? Well, like, It's no longer proportionate when you are committing a response that is far beyond what the other side did. When you've stopped defending yourself and you are now being an aggressor, attacking, invading four different countries, murdering tens of thousands of people, some estimates like the Lancet Medical Journal saying almost 200,000 people, forgetting about the people who are 
injured. Like imagine people missing limbs, their lives changed completely forever. The people yeah. blinded, the people they're forgotten about. No one even cares about them. You're not yeah. dead in Palestine. You don't matter. That's the narrative that has been pushed to us. If you're dead, you somewhat matter. You can bring the number up and we can put you in the headlines. If you're a Palestinian and you're not dead, the Western yeah. world has told you, yeah. you don't matter. We don't if care you're PTSD, if you're injured. If you have trauma, yeah, if, they don't care. If, if you're depressed, if you have trauma, if you're disabled, if you're disfigured, it doesn't matter. We don't care. We'll promote equality and all of this and please, uh, World Mental Health Days on Thursday. These things are <laughs> incredibly important, by the way. But uh, in Palestine, oh, as long as you're alive, be happy. If you're missing your limbs, if you're missing your family members, your sister's dead, it's okay. You're alive. Keep going. Maybe yeah. next week you won't be alive and then your life will matter. Keep holding on. We'll work We'll work for a ceasefire. We'll ask our mate Netanyahu. We'll, we'll put a, yeah. a word in. We'll send the aid, you know, parachutes in that. Might crush you, which I did. <laughs> yeah, you know. that was crazy. We'll, 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 we'll send some aid that way, the most dangerous way possible. Um, and yeah, we'll just keep feeding you lies. Um, we're going to start attacking other countries because, you know, there might be hostages there <laughs> when they're none, right? They, they don't even use, they can't even use that excuse anymore. Like you said, they're running out of excuses. And... God knows what the solution is. I mean, the solutions always come back to the fundamental, which they say they're going to do, but they're not doing, which is literally diplomacy. Yeah, well, like, the solution is, is is evident, but they don't want yeah, to pursue they that don't want solution. It. That's they don't the want to issue. The solution, no, no, no group of people, no human beings are just inherently evil. This is such a racist idea that... Oh, the Arabs just want to attack people and they want to cause terror and evil and they want to spread this evil all throughout the world. No, that's not the case, bro. These people are caged up. They can't collect rainwater in their home, yeah. own homes. They get kicked out of their own homes. They're constantly being spied on. There's checkpoints everywhere. They're not allowed to work. There's no trade. Barely any water, barely any food, barely any electricity. They're not just violent for no reason. Give them the same rights you afford your own citizens and they will live with you in peace and harmony. It's j j just you have to think of other human beings the same way as you think of yourself to be able to come to a resolution and a solution. But they don't. They believe the Palestinians are inherently violent. And unless they occupy the Palestinians, unless they um, the Palestinians are subservient to them, they won't have peace. They must have control of the Palestinians to have peace. What a racist idea, man. It's so ridiculous. That, oh, but what must Israel do? They have to ensure their safety and security. They can't give them a house right next to them. They're, they're in a bad neighborhood, as they always say. What a racist thing again. They're in a bad... Israel are just in a bad neighborhood. Bro, it's so racist. It's so blatantly racist as well. They don't, the Arabs are just bad. Everyone around Israel is bad. Israel is the only good guy in that region. The country who has now in the past 12 months bombed five different countries are in a bad neighborhood. All while, meanwhile, their other neighbors, Jordan are supporting them, UAE are supporting them, Saudi Arabia are supporting them, shooting down Iranian, uh, not Iranian, like Houthi and uh, all these drones and things like that, supporting Israel, but they're still in a bad neighborhood. Like these narratives and all of these things in it's uh, 2024, people say about, oh, how can this idea not be accepted in 2024? In 2024, we still have the idea that some people are just inherently bad. I, it's crazy. <laughs> it's, it's crazy. The man. brown people just want to see chaos and destruction. But anyway, we say we, it's basically saying the same thing every single week. Now, this was a good conversation because it was a roundup of what we have learned throughout this one year and how there's been no ceasefire no one gives a shit and things are just getting worse and we just need to keep saying this until things get better and then you know we, we can't stop speaking about it man we we have to deliver the same message again and again because it, it literally leads back to fundamental we don't have to give magic pills and some magic like piece of information in, in order to change things it's like this again, we need this constant anti-war narrative that we're against 
the war, we need ceasefire and we need to humanize Palestinians, right? And give them the support they need and give them the lands that have been taken away from them unrightfully. Give them them lands back and also the innocent Israelis that have suffered from them. Compensate them as well and just, you know... <laughs> Stop fucking escalating things. It's simple yeah. things, man. I'm not. It's not rocket science. At the end of the day, it's actually simple human rights people want. Yeah, we'll release the hostages as well. No one wants to see the hostages. Well, there are some depraved people who would be happy that the hostages and stuff were taken. Hostages yeah. need to be released. The Palestinian hostages need to be released as well. Many of them are not prisoners. Of course, some of them will be. But you can't take a child... Uh, to jail for collecting rainwater and pretend these are legitimate um, prisoners. There's a 97 or no 99% conviction rate. That just doesn't happen in in a fair legal system. They're all tried through military courts as well. Some of them are held without charge for years. They don't see their family without charge. Some of them are imprisoned for waving a Palestinian flag. Like I said, others for collecting rainwater. They are hostages. They need to be released as well. We've spoken about the Israeli hostages. Release them to keeping people in these dungeons and stuff. It's not okay. And Netanyahu dropping bombs in their head is not okay. Actually work to, to, towards releasing them. Like Those people um, deserve to see their families again. And the Palestinians deserve to see their families again. And everyone else in Gaza and the West Bank deserve to have freedom and human rights like the rest of us do in the world. So yeah, inshallah, we, we pray for everyone in the middle, middle East and all throughout the world. Hopefully uh, we see some sort of peace and stability soon. Inshallah and Ameen. Brother, let's end it there. Um, and to those who have been listening, uh, don't lose faith and don't lose hope. Have a good day.